higher. Chapter 9 on integration, the mixed questions exercise 9 out at the end. Number 3, there's 4 definite integrals to evaluate here. Right, well this one, what have we got here? Now there's something else you could do with this one, but I think I'll just split it into its two terms. They're both getting divided by 3, so I've got a third of x and I've got two thirds. That's just, I prefer to see the coefficient separate from the term. So that's going to be, that goes up to 2 and then divide by 2. So it'll be a half times a third. And that'll simply go back to a linear term. Work it out at 5 and subtract, work it out at 1. So what I've got then is a sixth of 5 squared minus 2 thirds of 5. Take away the initial value, 1 sixth of 1 squared minus 2 thirds of 1. Now, it's a nuisance, it's full of fractions, and that's what all of these are going to be. You'll do a little bit of integration, which is just add 1 to the power, divide by the power, and then it just turns into a big mass of arithmetic, usually involving fractions. So what's that? That's 25 upon 6 minus 10 upon 3. Oh, lovely. And that's 1 upon 6 minus 2 upon 3. Equally lovely. Now, you could work out the two parts separately. But something else you could do would be, well, they seem to go in pairs. Like the sixes could go together and the thirds could go together. So I could do the two fifth, 25 upon 6 minus the 1 6 gives me 24 upon 6, which is 4. And I've got the negative 10 upon 3 plus 2 upon 3. Then that makes that minus just 8 upon 3. And 8 upon 3 is um, blah, 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 2 and 2 thirds. And two and two thirds away from that leaves one and one third. So you can do that for your answer. One and one third, or if you liked, like four thirds. But there's an alternative. If you've got a common factor, that was the pest here. All of these fractions came from that wee three sitting at the bottom there. And that little three infected every single term it produced. That was common to everything, so it was always going to be common to every single multiplication. So what you could do is, you could drag that out of there and just leave x minus 2. Because whatever you go through for this, that third is going to linger with each of them. So you could just keep that out at the side. And then once you've finally tidied this up, you can let that third go in and savage what's left, rather than destroying all the terms on the way down. So I'll just leave that sitting there. So this nicely becomes a half of x squared up to 2, divide by 2, and back to a linear term. Now look at that. That's just nice. So what's that going to mean when I work it out? Well, I'm going to have, work it out at 5, a half of 5 squared minus 2 times 5. Take away a half of the 1 squared minus 2 times the 1. I'll just keep this third tethered onto its leash here. You can just wait to get in there and finish them off. So it's tied here in the bracket, and I'll just work out where this lot comes to. Whoop. So what I've got, I've got 25 up in 2, minus 10. Take away a half, and then, whoops, it's still minus, I was looking at a wee bit in advance, minus 2. So I've got a third of, and you just think, well, what's this lot going to come to here? Again, they can work in pairs. Instead of working out this bracket, minus, and working out this bracket, I'm going to let them work together. I'm going to let the halves go together and the whole numbers go together. Because I'd have 25 up in 2 take away a half is 24 up in 2. And that's just 12. And I've got negative 10 plus 4, which is, sorry, negative 10 plus 2, which is negative 8. And that's just 4. Now let the third add it. Whoosh, there it goes. Does its dividing, what it was wanting to do all the time, and you've got four thirds. Or if you like, one and a third, either way around. It can be a handy thing to do. Take out a common factor. It will simplify the arithmetic. But only if you're confident in taking out common factors. And now part B. Right, what have we got here? Negative 2 to negative 1. It's almost ready to go. X is fine, 4 is fine, but that little x cubed has been lingering about. I'll need to get that back up on top. So it'll be x to the negative 3. Now they're all ready to go out. It was just a case of waiting for this little term to tie its laces. Now, evaluate it. So that's going to go power 1 up to power 2, divide by the 2. The constant is going to go back to its linear term. Negative 3 will add 1, go back up to negative 2, divide by negative 2. Now, rather than writing another line, or maybe I will because there's something else I want to tidy up. So I've got take away 3, divided by negative 2, 
Work it out to negative 2, work it out to negative 1. And of course what I was saying was this. So I've got half of x squared plus 4x. And then I think I'll rewrite this as 3 over 2x squared. Just to put it back where it was. Now there was something I could have done here. I could have taken out a factor of a half to remove fractions from it. That would have had to get bumped up to an 8. But I've gone past it now so I'll just leave it the way it is. You don't want to be doing that unless you're quite confident in doing that anyway. So it's just a case of evaluating now. So I've got a half of, I'm working it all out to negative 1, the top one, a half of negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 3 over 2 times the negative 1 squared. From that you subtract the value, its initial value, which was at negative 2. So it's a half of negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3 over 2 times negative 2 squared. Ooh. Right, and now, a massive arithmetic, oh, just set it all out. Well, that's a half, that's minus 4, and that's a square again, so that's plus 3 upon 2. That's going to be a half of 4, which is just 2. That's minus 8, and that's going to be plus, and this is a wee nasty one, because that's going to be 4 positive 3 eighths. So what we'll do is, now some of these will take up not too bad, because this will go together. A half and 3 upon 2 is 4 upon 2 is 2, and negative 4 just makes that a negative 2. I'll just put the rest down. So I've got negative 2, take away a 2, plus an 8, and minus 3 eighths. And I can just fit my final answer in now, because that's going to be 4 minus 3 eighths will be 3, and the remaining 5 eighths. There we are. All crushed up at the bottom. So that's where all this arithmetic gravitated down to. Next one, not ready to go yet. We've got these brackets, I need to multiply that bracket. Square the first, twist the product, square the last. There we are, ready to go. Add one to the power, divide by that power. Add one to the power, divide by that power. Linear, well, constant goes back up to linear term. That's it, work it out at three, work it out at two and subtract those answers. So I've got a third of 3 cubed, uh, very handy. 4 times 3 squared, not so nice. 16 times 3, a little bit more. So take away a third of uh, 2 cubed, not so nice. Minus 4 times 2 squared, plus 16 times 2. So it's just that one nasty wee fraction there spoiling it all. Because that's all right, because that knocks out one of the powers, that just leaves you with a 9. And that's 4 9s are 36, and that's 3 16s are 48. Unfortunately, that's going to be 8 thirds. That's my fraction. But that's just going to be minus 16, and that's going to be plus 32. So what I'll do, will I work out, maybe in this case I'll work out the two parts separately, because that's not too bad here. I've got minus 12, so I've got positive 12, making 21. Minus 8 thirds, unfortunately. And I've got a 16 and a takeaway 16. So I've got 5 take away 8 thirds. Now 8 thirds is 2 and 2 thirds. So that would only leave me 2 and 1 third. There it is. And finally D. So this has been a long one. Not quite ready to go. I need to multiply it out. But that looks quite easy. X squared minus 2X. On the face of it, it looks nice and neat. Until you realise when you're integrating, it's going to go up to 3 divided by 3. I'm going to have thirds in it. And there's no 3's here. Still, no point complaining too soon. So what have I got? Up to 3, divide by 3. Up to 2, divide by 2. Well, that just makes it a 1. Evaluate it to 2 and subtract the answer at negative 1. Mm, that's not very neat. So I've got 1 third of 2 cubed minus 2 squared. From that, subtract 1 third of negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared. So that's going to be 8 upon 3 minus 4, take away negative, what power, negative a third, minus 1, because that part's positive. And instead of working those parts out, I'll just look at nice pairings here, I'll do those bits separately. So 8 thirds plus 1 third is 9 thirds, which is 3. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so that in fact just came to 0. So that integral just took you back where you started. There is. Question three.